Today we'll look at how we can use NX Join to model welds to accelerate the simulation model creation in SimCenter 3D. We'll begin by creating welds using NX Join. There are a number of different weld types that are supported for import into SimCenter 3D. Here we'll use the arc weld. Now that we've modeled the welds, we'll go into SimCenter 3D. We'll begin by creating our simulation models. And I'm not going to import any geometry at first because we're going to create some mid surfaces. We'll also create a test modal solution to ensure that our model runs. Next, we'll go to our idealized part, which is our associative copy of the CAD model, where we'll create a mid surface representation of our geometry. Then we can bring those mid-surfaces into our FEM. And shell mesh it. All right, if we take a look at the physical properties for our shell mesh, what we'll see is by default we're inheriting the material from CAD. This eliminates a source of error for the analyst in assigning the correct material. We're not only inheriting that from the CAD model, but we're also inheriting the mid-surface thickness from the mid-surface. So here, as a double check, we can see what that mid-surface thickness is on our shell mesh. And we can also visualize what material has been assigned to our mesh from our CAD model. All right, next we'll import the welds. We'll do that with a seam weld universal connection. We can add the join features. Here we can see our three arc welds. Next we need to specify how we'd like to model that seam weld. And we'd like to use C-Quad plus RBE3 spiders. This functionality is currently only available under a feature toggle. We plan to remove that feature toggle in SimCenter 2412, where we will create a slightly different functionality using CQuad 4 weld representation. Currently, that weld is represented on one side as a congruent mesh and the other as being connected with RBE3 elements. To see this better, let's go ahead and change the color of our weld and of our RBE3 elements. We plan to make this functionality congruent on both sides in the next release in 2412. And eliminate the 1D RBE3 elements. So let's do our test solve next. And here this is a live solve. It only takes a few seconds to run. And then we can view our results. Here's our first flexible mode and we can animate that to better visualize that first mode. And here we can see that weld is keeping the part hanging together. Alright, so that looks good. Next we'll make a CAD change as well as a change to our weld. 
So here we'll go back to our CAD model. We'll go into the expression editor and we'll make a change to the width of our geometry. And you can see that weld has gotten longer as well since we associated it with that edge. But let's say we're concerned about the amount of heat going into the part. We'd rather change that to a skip weld with three segments of 0.4 inches long each. All right, so there's two changes. Let's go back to our finite element model. And here we can see we have a geometry update and an update pending. So let's go ahead and update our FE model. Here you can see the welds have updated as well as our shell mesh. Let's see the effect on our results. Let's go ahead and clone our original solution so that we can maintain those original results and solve the cloned solution. And then we can display those results side by side with our new results. So here first we'll take a look at our updated results and we can display that side by side with our original results. And here you can see the mode has increased from 482 hertz to 535 hertz. And we can also animate both of those to visualize the mode shape.